Hi, my name is Tristan Rice, Director of Methodology with an emphasis in training systems from EXOS. And I'm Kapil Park, a cardiologist and medical lead at Fitbit. Now we're going to get into an incredibly important topic, which is sleep. And how do you understand the data that your members are bringing so that you can identify both the quality and quantity of sleep that they're getting on a daily basis? So one of the things I really like about how you're talking about things is it goes beyond physical activity. And so tell me how you think about sleep. Uh, um, sleep sleep is, is, is critical, it's fundamental. Um, one, thing, one thing that we, we've always appreciated is that <clears throat> it's not just the work yeah. that helps somebody improve their fitness or their performance and whatever it is. It's the combination of work and rest, right? Or work okay. and recovery. And you know, the little thing that we've always said is that it's work plus rest that equals success. It's not, it's not work plus more work plus more work that gets you better, right? Like, and it's not just rest and rest, right? Sure. Like, it's gotta be the sort of blend of the two. And something that we've come to appreciate over the last five or six years or so is, is, is just the absolute, uh, the, the critical role that sleep plays in recovery, almost sure. to the point that recovery is sleep, right? Mm -hmm. And that sleep is recovery. From, a, from an endocrine perspective, from a musculoskeletal perspective, yeah. from a neurocognitive perspective, it, we, we, we understand that if somebody is underslept, that the next day or over a series of days, they're gonna have decreases in access to their total levels of strength. Sure. They're gonna have decreases in access to total levels of cardiovascular fitness. They're gonna, ha they're, they're gonna have decreased things in uh, uh, like reactive, um, reactivity, right? Yep. Reaction yep. time. But more than that, we know that from, you know, there's a physical side, but also the mental side right. as well is gonna take a significant hit. Decreases in cognitive performance, in emotional regulation, yep. in, 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 in creativity, right? Mm -hmm. and, and output and productivity at work. All of these things take a massive hit when folks are underslept. Sure. And the thing about being underslept is that the chronically underslept, your brain is incredibly tricky, yeah. right? And the underslept don't report feeling underslept. Right. And so what I love about wearables is the opportunity on a daily basis yeah. to, to, to wake up and to have a, an, an objective rating of both the quality and quantity of sleep. And so as a For coach, sure. it's wildly helpful. Yeah, I imagine yeah. as a cardiologist, you also see a lot of value in it. Oh, for sure. So I'll, I'll add the sort of medical component to all of those things, right? Like, so in addition to your changes in uh, physical functioning, you also see metabolic changes. There's mm. changes in cortisol levels, in uh, rates of diabetes and hypertension and things like that associated with sleep. So lots of like cardiometabolic changes. Mm. One of the most uh, immediate impacts of sleep is if, you're, if you have uh, a significant lack of sleep, then you are actually at a much higher rate of um, car crashes. And that's an, like an immediate public health issue, yeah. right? Like, and, and they've done these studies in uh, drivers of various types where it's almost the same as being drunk driving, yeah. right? Like, and yeah. so um, there's societal public health and almost immediate effects as mm -hmm. well as a long-term like metabolic and you know, all the like uh, effects on function. So absolutely, wearables are great because you can, um, it, it pulls out like what's happening and, mm -hmm. and both the quality, and I love how you said the quality and the quantity of sleep. Um, one of the things that we've worked with is the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, mm. and they have guidelines around this, and, and their guidelines are uh, twofold. So one is around quantity of sleep, so sure. duration. Yep. And now it's different for everybody, but yeah, for, on average, like seven hours of sleep is what you need to, to be refreshed. What's interesting about that is the American Heart Association has incorporated duration of sleep as part of their checklist of, they call it Life Simple Eight. Yeah. These are the eight things that you should do to have uh, for cardiovascular health. Yeah. Adequate duration of sleep is, oh, is, is that right? on that list, yeah. together with cholesterol and not smoking and things that you typically associate with heart disease. Yeah. So like the, the importance of sleep in, the, in a cardiologist's world mm. has sort of gone up. Mm. The other thing, as you mentioned, it's not just quantity and it's, it's also quality of sure. sleep. Um, is so one is just consistency over time. Mm -hmm. So the American Academy of Sleep Medicine also recommends consistently getting sufficient sleep. Right. Because what often ends up happening is this concept of um, social jet lag. So you sleep for till 7 a.m. in the work week because you got to yep. get to work and then yep. you say I'm going to make up for it on right. Saturday and yeah. Sunday. Yeah. And so you sleep till like 10 a.m. or whatever and yeah. then Monday rolls around and you wake up feeling groggy, almost mm. as if you're jet lagged, right, yeah. because you haven't been on the plane, yeah. but your body has, your circadian rhythm is thrown off from the like few days yeah, of like, absolutely. and then it flips out over the, the following weekend. 
And so this idea of like trying to maintain a consistent schedule over time mm -hmm. is, is becomes really important. The other thing that, that I, I love about what you said is <clears throat> there's a bi-directionality to the physical and uh, physical activity yeah, absolutely. and sleep, right? It's like, a chicken so, or egg situation. And, and on the one hand, exactly what you said, you don't sleep enough, you, you don't have that functional ability. Right. Right? You just yep. can't have that same level of strength that's on. The flip side is if you work out, your sleep qu quality tends to improve. Right. And so I'm curious, how, knowing all of these factors, how do you build that into somebody's work plan? Because you're obviously yeah. not at home with them when they're sleeping. Absolutely. Now you have some insights from the wearable about what's happening. Yeah. How do you help people? Because if you think about going to sleep, yeah. it's harder to get to sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not something you can actively draw yourself Correct. into. It's, so the first thing that we look at when making recommendations about improving somebody's quality or quantity of sleep yeah. is uh, what we call, or, or what's called circadian entrainment, yeah. right? The, the, this foundational sleep biology, right. right? Because we understand that my circadian rhythm is actually slightly longer than the 24 hour mm -hmm. light dark cycle and it's different for women as well. Yep. And, and so it, it's a daily struggle to, to align you know, my circadian rhythm with sure. when it's time to go to bed, what, yeah. what time the clock says I need to go to sleep. And so there are things that we can do and, and I love that you call it consistency because consistency is absolutely absolutely the key right you know the things that you can do a across the entire wake uh, part of the day right. uh, to, to set yourself up for sleep from the very outset, from waking up. It, are you able to get <clears throat> two to 10 minutes of natural light into your eyes, right? right. Like even the simple thing that you can do is <clears throat> as you're unloading the dishwasher first thing in the morning, just open the window, right? Look right. up at the sky, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. That, that, that gives you a spike of cortisol, which A, naturally sort of wakes you up. So could decrease your reliance, your need for something like a, like a caffeine, caffeine, like a coffee sure. to get you up and going in the morning. But it also sets a timer, right? About That's a 10 right. hour timer for, for, for that cortisol to fade out, for melatonin to start to be produced naturally, right. which then naturally will draw you into sleep at a more appropriate time Correct. later on in the evening, right? Uh, having consistency of things like uh, uh, meals, mm -hmm. hydration, exercise, right? Having a regular routine around these things give incredibly strong markers yep. for the body to anchor to, right? Yeah, so, yeah, that, yeah. so that you can draw that circadian rhythm into that 24 hour cycle. And, and so those are the very, that's the first place that we go. Can Got we it. clean some of these things up and improving consistency? Yeah. Once we get past that, now we wanna think about things like the environment, right? What's the macro environment? And these are the recommendations yeah. folks I'm sure are aware of at this point, a dark, quiet, cool room, yeah. right? Like turn the temperature down a little bit, sure. get it as dark as possible. Eye masks work phenomenally at this. Uh, and quiet is the only one that has a bit of an asterisk, right? Yeah. Because it doesn't necessarily have to be quiet. You just want the level, you want the ambient noise to be consistent, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, so could be a fan, could be a white sure. noise machine. You just want to drown out the ambulance. That's right. Right. That's it, coming it, in. It can be up and down. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, the, well, like that's, that's going to wake you up. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. It, it, it's the change, right? That's it's right. the same the in light. Mm -hmm. And that sort of stuff that, that startles you out of that sleep. That's right. And then, and then finally, the, 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 the things that we would specifically call it to avoid sleep detractors. Sure. Consumables, right? Like yeah. when was the last time that you had a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. right? How far away For from sure. sleep is that? We know yeah, that yeah. we know that that can take anywhere from seven to 11 hours to metabolize yep. depending on the person, right? Right. Uh, things like alcohol and, sure. and, you know, now much more prevalent uh, THC and products, uh, yep. products derived from that. But then also cohabitants, pets, sure. kids. Right. And, yeah. and what are recommendations that we can make around aligning those sorts of things? Yeah. And <clears throat> what we what we end up saying is when we're able to align consistency, when we're able to optimize the environment, then we see improvements in things like restorative sleep, right. time in deep sleep, yeah. time in REM sleep. For and, sure. and I wonder if, if that has, you know, time in restorative sleep, right? These deep and REM stages of sleep has any value oh, as a cardiologist. It absolutely does, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, that's the quality of sleep component, right? Because you need both sufficient sleep and high quality sleep. Because sure. if you have interrupted sleep, if you have low quality sleep because you took caffeine at 8 p.m. or things right. like that, then, then you don't quite get the restorative benefits of that, both on the physical front, but then also on the metabolic front um, from that standpoint. I also love how you put it as routines. Um, so, so you sort of have the routine so your body gets used to it. And yep. so it, it's a cue that understands that it's starting That's to get- That's exactly what it, it is, it's, yeah. It's getting to bedtime. 
But then you set the environments, you allow yourself to fall asleep, mm. as opposed to make yourself sleep, which is yeah. impossible, right? Like you right. sort of have to just let it happen, mm -hmm. but it's hard to let it happen if the environment isn't set up for it. And mm. then there's constraints, right? Like you don't get rid of kids, but maybe it is that you figure out how to do it so that you're in a different part of the house or like some rules around how their bedtime and your bedtime align, et cetera, mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just about like practically tying it all together. So I, I think it's great and like wearables are a great way to bring the data and, and turn that data into action. Absolutely, uh, you know, there's this idea that there, there's, a, there's a special set of people who can get by off of four, five, or six hours of sleep, yeah. and that is just an absolute lie. Absolutely. It's just a complete myth. <clears throat> that's just not true, right? And the thing that's great about wearables and, and, and having an objective sort of measure of both quality and quantity of sleep every day is that what gets measured gets focused on. Sure. Right, and so if, you, if, you, if, you're, if your members uh, you know, start to have access to this sort of information, they're going to pay attention to it. And if they're going to pay attention to it, they're probably going to want to improve it, right. improve it. And looking at their foundational sleep biology, right, of aligning that circadian rhythm, looking at the environment, right, both the macro and the micro, and, and looking at some of the detractors, you know, and doing what you can to mitigate the way that For those sure. interrupt your sleep can go, can just make uh, huge improvements in, in both the quality and the quantity of the sleep that you're getting. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more.